put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Con Air Movement. Cameron Poe is honorably discharged from the Ranger Corps and he comes home to meet his wife again and she's pregnant and he is you know just you know very corny in looking forward to the baby and she works in this really dive bar and one of the regulars you know he basically tries to flirt with her. It's actually, it's it's interesting, he's, we're told he's a regular, and yet he, he speaks to one of his friends about her as though it was the first time he saw her, so that's a bit interesting, but yeah, it, it ends up with a couple of guys assaulting Poe, and when he defends himself, you know, a, a knife is presented and he defends himself and he basically one hit kills this guy. He sucker punches him once and the guy dies. I, I don't know exactly how that's supposed to work. I feel like if he if he hit the nose, that would make sense for killing anyway. He is you know accused of murder and you know he he pleads guilty on the advice of his lawyer in you know expecting you know a short sentence but the judge looks at his military record and yeah basically treats it like you know what's it called military court case so yeah he goes for eight years in a maximum security prison and you know he you know the the movie picks back up after these eight years have passed and he's getting a parole to you know so he can go back to be with his wife so he can meet his daughter for the first time he went in three months before she was born and they've been exchanging the letters so they do know some things about each other and you know he he wouldn't let her visit he wouldn't let them visit in this you know maximum security prison and yeah however the prison tra prisoner transport transport plane you know it takes on the worst criminals you know that have been caught and they manage to take over the plane and hide the fact that they've taken over the plane and you know it's now up to Poe to stop them before they leave the country you know to, to a country that does not extradite you know defend the remaining guards and you know both protect and ensure an insulin shot for the diabetes stricken and seemingly kind of innocent honorable baby O who he's black he is in jail for a long time he he reads the the you know reads aloud the the parole letter and is like it's gonna be a long time before I see one of those and he's on the transport so he's being taken to the new maximum security prison and yeah I, I don't know exactly what he's in for. I don't think they ever say what he's in for but 
in spite of the you know the, the relatively conservative themes here it probably is you know unintentionally admitting that a lot of black guys are in prison without really having much of a reason to without being particularly you know dangerous people although then you know if you look at the the other black guys in this yeah now and and yeah Poe has to do all of this while remaining you know while, while still not being found out as not belonging on this plane full of murderers now this is another in the series of movies that I first saw years ago, close to when it came out, that really made an impression on me and in some of the cases, including this case, one that I've watched tons of times over the years and that I absolutely love. My friend and I had this bunch of, you know, action movies, I guess mostly from the 90s, that we would just re-watch over and over and this is one of them, you know, we could quote a lot of it. We once sat down with a pen and paper to try to do a body count. I think we pretty much agreed with the the one on IMDb now. And yeah, it's just it's incredibly rewatchable. Now Dave Chappelle improvised most of his lines in this and they just he is hilarious. This is one of my favorite Colmini performances. You know, I, I love the dude on Star Trek. And this is such a different character. He's just, yeah, he's described as a piece of work, a real piece of work. And he and Cusack are like, Meany is like a DEA, you know, guy. And Cusack is martial service. So they have to work together and they do not want to work together. And that's that's before they even meet each other. They do not want to work with the other department, basically. You know, they think that they should be in charge. And they're very different people. They they really do not get along from word one. Like me, you know, drives up in this you know, souped up sports car with, you know, a license plate that says ass kicker with Z's and you know and without the E I believe and you know just yeah really you notice him you know he doesn't he doesn't walk lightly meanwhile Cusack is this really thinking like one of his first lines he's quoting Dostoevsky you know and he's like you know he, he uses this fancy word for something and then, you know, Meany is like, w what does that even mean? And, and he's like, you know, oh, okay, I, here are some, uh, you know, synonyms for that. And, and he's like, you know, dictionary boy over here, thesaurus boy would actually be more appropriate. And just, yeah, they do not get along and it's, it's a lot of fun. Now... <laughs> Nicolas Cage is known for his overacting. He's fine here. Like, there are times where it really fits that he's overacting. And there are times in this where he's actually very subtle. You know, he's got the steely, cool kind of doesn't talk too much demeanor to him some in this. That's, you know, very popular with action heroes and, you know, action hero, action movie protagonists. Now, it has already been noted that his southern accent, his long hair, and his facial hair do not really become him. Yeah, absolutely true. Now, this is one of my all-time favorite Bushimi, Steve Bushimi performances and characters. And, like, he is... I'm going to have to use the notes. He's basically... He's introduced in something like the like like he's in this locked down you know secure suit it's it's like you know it's it's a mix between the the kind you you know the the straight jacket and then like 
what we see Hannibal Lecter in when he's being transported. And just, you know, some of the first you see is just his eyes, you know, and then, you know, the mask comes off and the eyes just move around a little bit and he's not he's not smiling he's just like like almost a blank expression on his face you know and he's in this white shirt and like you know doesn't talk too much very silent and it's just it's in such great stark contrast to these other prisoners who are in like you know blue for the not too bad and orange suits for the really bad you know the the really dangerous criminals and he's just sitting there with you know and and they're like you know laughing and chatting and such you know really happy they're in this situation there is nothing with with him there's like you know and and a little bit into it he does start talking and then it's like this psychoanalytical stuff like you know he'll he'll see one of the other convicts and he'll be like i think i know what happened to, to him you know and something like this and you know what what's really going on within this is this and it's just it's so creepy now and you know malkovich is awesome in this you know just utterly psychotic i mean th these are some sick twisted people on this plane, you know, and yeah, he, you know, his his character name is Cyrus, and he's nicknamed the Virus. And like Cusack says about him, he likes to brag that he's killed more people than cancer, you know. And he's like he's done it all. And there's again with him sometimes just completely calm, even when talking. Like there's a point where he finds out that one of the other cons, you know. Yeah, basically isn't gonna, you know, he didn't make it on the plane. So he's at least going back to prison. It's likely that he'll, you know, he'll face a strong penalty for trying to flee on the plane. And he's just like, that's too bad. I liked him, you know, and just, yeah. And, and other times he's like shouting and just completely crazy. And you know, he has some awesome lines as well like <laughs> another one of the convicts asks are you crazy and he says according to my last psych evaluation yes and like you know, just, what is it something like you know just uh, j just wait or something like that the last guy be patient the last guy who told me to be patient I burned him and bagged his ashes just yeah complete psycho and psycho and the let's see and and Danny Trejo as this you know really nasty rapist and just yeah utterly despicable and just you know and and the face and his face like he is usually playing a badass and he's awesome at it and in this one it's one of the cases where it's the you know the villain kind of badass the the you know the person you really hate and he is so good as this guy that you utterly hate he is just yeah incredibly nasty and yeah and you know it's Riff Trags points out about him that is a lot of ugly for one face and here it really fits because it is like you know yeah you you he is one of the ugliest people on the, you know in in a figuratively speaking Ving Rhames of course you know, this has so many great actors and great just personalities even if they're not like super well known as actors just great person that like Dave Chappelle you know you may be more know as sort of a comedian kind of and and Danny Trejo isn't exactly you know what what is it a lister but they're both great they're they're given roles that they really do exceptionally well at and just and it, basically everyone's well cast Ving Rhames is this black militant kind of guy who just again just 
really, really scary, intense kind of, yeah. And, you know, on a completely different, excuse me, note, speaking of, you know, great casting, I mean, Poe's wife and daughter are perfectly cast. Like, they have barely anything to do or even say. And, you know, I mean, several of several of the daughter's lines are her narrating these letters that we're seeing him read in prison. You know, she barely has, a, like, two lines, maybe, on screen. And she just... She acts well, and it's basically the the two of them are basically there so we can gather symp to to get audience sympathy for Poe, so that when we see him, you know, take on these prisoners, we know that he's the good guy, you know, in spite of the fact that he does really, <laughs> yeah, pretty. Yeah, despicable things to some of these people as well. You know, there's and and yeah, they're they're there to get garner garner sympathy, and it works. You know, they're they're the kind of utterly bland. Like they do have a little personality, to, to be fair, but they are just there. To it's it's not about how it affects them. It's just he is the the focus, and they're there so we can see this kind of, you know, there's. You know, that w there's there's pressure on men to sort of protect their family and be there for the family, and that's what this plays on with with the two of them. You know, he he has to get back to these sweet women in his you know sweet girls in his life and protect them from the outside world. You know, and yeah, they they do absolutely fantastic on on that both of them. Now, this movie actually introduced me to most of the main cast, you know, so so everything else I've seen, you know, Malkovich, Cusack, Cage, Reigns, Bushimi Trejo, yeah, even somewhat Chappelle, and I have, him I haven't watched that many movies with, but yeah, every, you know, I, I do love him in... Robin Hood, Men in Tights as well, but that's about, I, I don't know him from a lot, but yeah, this, and this really had me looking for more movies with them. Now, you know, there are a ton of one-liners, this is infinitely quotable, you know, every, basically every major character has at least some line that's like really badass, like Poe, at one point, he's like facing a possible ally, and you know they're they're aiming guns at each other, and the other guy is like, you know, can I lower my gun? Go right ahead. Are you gonna lower yours? Sorry, there's two men that I trust. One of them's me. The other one's not you. And it's just yeah, and. Yeah, yeah, they all have fantastic lines. Now, this has been criticized for being too effects-driven and thus not allowing for a, not, a lot of character development. I do kind of see, you know, there, there are a lot of effects in this, and to an extent they are at the start of the show, but I'd say that the characters are fairly developed. Like, there, are, there aren't really any arcs particularly, but everyone is established well. This, When this movie came out, we weren't yet really accustomed to this very swift characterization that's more commonplace in today's movies. I'm not going to say that this is quite on the level of, you know, more recent, you know, very swiftly established characters, but it does set them up. Like, they all have these brief little moments where we really see what, you know, what is deep within this character. What are they really like? You know, and like I say, you know, with Poe, one of the very first things you see him do is 
you know, talk to his unborn door, like, you know, up against the her, her pregnant belly, and she's like, this is embarrassing, and he's like, I'm, I'm having a moment with our daughter, you know, and it's super corny, but it, that is part of his character, you know, and then we have this really badass, and he also has a little bit of an edge. He's, he's kind of a back talker, like, when he's being, about to be transported on the plane, like, he's, he has this, a picture of his daughter in his front pocket and like one of the guards who's also kind of you know a hard ass he like takes it out and says what's this no personal items on this plane and Poe doesn't say like that's okay I'm I'm headed home anyway that's what you know he's like just as long as you know I'm getting that back sooner or later are you telling me what to do you heard me and just yeah it's <laughs> At, at which point a, a female guard, of course, breaks it up and says, okay, enough of this macho crap. You know, always good when, a, when an action movie is, you know, self-aware like this. This does not take itself too seriously. It's it's not unlike in Commando, you know, where the, the you know, the one major female character also comments on that, yeah. And just... Yeah, you know, most of the criminals as well have some kind of, you know, really defining, like, once they've taken, you know, taken charge of the plane, one of the guards that remain is a female guard, and Trejo gets up against her, and, you know, he's, like, really creepily detailing, you know, how, you know, yeah, the, the, the rape, and again, this, yeah, that's, that's his character right there, that he, you know, he really wants to rape her, and he's clearly enjoying even the thought of raping, and yeah, that's, that's not a deep character, but it is a character, it's, it's, some of these character, characters, especially the, the criminals, are one note, but they are, there they do still have character and that that is somewhat impressive for a movie that's 103 minutes not counting the end credits and has a you know a good half dozen main characters just on the side of the criminals like if we count every major character this is probably about a dozen main characters and they do all have some character traits now, but but yeah, with that said, this is you know, the Nostalgia Cray recently did a an editorial where he said that you know summer blockbusters were expected to be bad between '96 and '01. This falls within that, and yeah, I can I can kind of see what you know, yeah. Now the. This is a cult classic, a guilty pleasure of mine, you know, badass, over-the-top action flick. Yeah, it does get corny and cheesy, and it's it's dumb, but the fun kind of dumb. You know, you've got shootouts, chases, you know, some vehicular, some on foot, melee fights, you know, tense scenes. It can get pretty violent, and there's a lot of slow-mo, you know with you know this this hits a number of the major cliches some of them even you know using them several times like more than once Cusack you know is is like talking through a headset and frustrated by the the outcome of it he like rips it off and throws it down you know like a, there's a third time where he's also frustrated he's kind of wearing a headset and I was just waiting for him to also toss that one you know that yeah, Poe manages to get his shirt off and he's not the only one several of the major you know the ones who are really buff especially managed to find some way and you know there's there's a character who almost gets hit by a plane three times in a relatively short succession too and you know yeah and of course we have someone walking away from an explosion 
and someone at the same time is actually running away from that explosion, so it's a twofer, you know, and I will say I don't find that any one action scene goes on for too long. Like there's there's not a lot of ringing between them, but there is just you know it, it tends to be tense between the the action scenes, but still you know there are no action scenes that by themselves go on for too long in you know in a row we do get a little bit of like character stuff or just you know you'll see characters planning the next move or something so you know just a little bit to, to catch our bearings and this uses you know sweet home alabama and yeah really well and you know when when the movie shows pose you know, lovey-dovey side, it of course plays country music, it, it plays How Do I Live w Without You, or something, it's called something like that, and it's performed by Trisha Yearwood, and yeah, it's, it's just as corny as it sounds. And that covers those. Now, I, you know, for comparison, I do not really remember the Rock or Bad Boys or a lot of the other 90s action flicks except Face Off which I might review at some point. I, the thing with The Rock is it has John C. McGinley it has you know I can't believe I can't remember his name Kyle Reese, Michael Bean it has and it has Tony Todd and if they're not on screen, I don't really care. And if it seems like, okay, that was probably their last scene, I think I just turned the movie off. Yeah, it's just, even even back then, it's just, yeah, Michael Bay never really did anything for me. So, yeah. You know, and I think I, in an earlier video, said that I probably stopped watching after Pearl Harbor. I think I did actually watch Bad Boys 2, and just yeah and that's also if you watch the two bad boys movies in fairly close proximity like when i watched bad boys 2 i think i still remembered bad boys 1 and you can tell man his style has just completely is you know gotten so so fond of itself really wants to show every single little you know yeah, every single little moment that he thinks is fun or cool, and you know, it. In 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 his review of Pearl Harbor, the nostalgia critic refers to Bay's style as porn. You know, porning it basically making making porn in every frame. You know, every frame of the movie is like porn. That is Michael Bay in in the more recent years. So yeah. Now. This has been described as the soundtrack being too loud. I can kind of see what they mean, but I th I think it's absolutely perfect. I love the theme to this with the kind of electric guitar and just, yeah. And, and you know, this has been called repetitive. Yeah, I've already mentioned some of the stuff it repeats. And, you know, it's got a lot of big explosions. This same director, Simon West, also directed Expendables 2, which is a lot of fun, but this is better. And the first Tomb Raider movie, which I don't have an opinion on. I'm not into adventure films, really. And the writer also wrote Beautiful Girls, which is obviously a better movie than this. And Disturbing Behavior, which I don't recall, but I do seem to think... It, I, I feel like it's pretty meh. But yeah, now this movie does have some really ugly messages, and I, I might get into some of them in the thoughts on, so as to not spoil any of this. Now, I believe that covers it. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.